So, I think it's time to begin. Um, I'd like to welcome you here to uh, Laura Marx's lecture, Thinking Like a Carpet, Body Perception and Artificial Life. My name is Dr. Samir Gandesha, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Humanities. I'm also the director of the Institute for the Humanities, uh, which is um, uh, sponsoring this uh, lecture with the School of Contemporary Arts. I recently had um, uh, a brief email uh, communication with uh, uh, my colleague, uh, Terry Zaslaw, um, about the direction that the um, Institute for the Humanities has recently taken. Uh, Jerry, as many of you will know, uh, is one of the founding members of, of this university, um, and he played a, a very instrumental role in um, getting the Institute for the Humanities off the ground. And when I asked Jerry about what he thought about the, the recent um, uh, um, slate of programming that, that we've put together, um, he had this to say. He said, I think it communicates a vigorous commitment to forming an intellectual grouping of new and older people and to intellectual life. And I have to say, uh, I'm not usually given to uh, you know, floating around the horn, especially not in, in, in public setting like this, but I'd say it's quite gratifying to hear this uh, from Jerry. Is the Institute is uh, going through a, a process of, of, of transformation and, and regeneration. Um, took um, the helm uh, in September. Uh, and as a result of this, we'd really like to try to strike out in uh, new directions, as well as remaining committed to some of the core themes that we've pursued in the past such as the struggles uh, of uh, the labor movement, the politics of social democracy, questions of violence and its alternatives, commitment to working in a critical European intellectual and artistic traditions. And last but not least, the commitment to trying to regenerate the cultural and intellectual sources of a genuine, inclusive, citizenship with an all-embracing commitment to social justice. I thought that Jerry's remarks were quite fortuitous, given that Helena Reckitt, who lectured in this very room last night um, on relational aesthetics and feminist uh, art, um, conducted a, a graduate seminar for us in the humanities uh, uh, department um, uh, just on Monday, when she arrived in Banff, um, in which a crucial question posed with the existence of queer theory was the relationship between the generations. Among the questions that Helen posed were the following. How is it possible for the present or future generation to engage with and perhaps even appropriate the as yet unrealized potentials that might lay dormant in a past generation? Can those unrealized desires and hopes be mobilized for future struggles and political organization. This prompted, as you can imagine, a very interesting and engaging discussion, which ranged uh, from uh, a series of disparate art practices to contemporary politics and the history of the 20th century. This relationship between a present or future generation and the as yet unrealized potential of past generations might be viewed as a model through which to understand the relationship between cultural studies and the Western humanistic tradition, which have often been in a somewhat conflictual relationship uh, with one another. In a recent article in the New York Times, which traces the shifting fortunes of the humanities, there is a sense in which the cultural wars of the 1980s, for example, the battle of the canon, the attempts to include hitherto un- or underrepresented groups, the discussion of political correctness, have now given away, given away to a profound concern about the very future of the humanities within the context of what is being called the corporatization of just about everything. As the founder of the University of Phoenix puts it, and I'm uh, quoting him uh, via Stanley Fish uh, in another article from the New York Times, Coming here is not a rite of passage. We are not trying to develop value systems or go in for uh, that expand your mind nonsense. 
This seems to be borne out by recent developments in North America, such as the crisis of the UC system, as well as in the United Kingdom, in which the government there has recently announced a whopping 80% cut to the instructional budgets of universities, with the exception of the important disciplines, read engineering, sciences, medicine, and business schools. This is, of course, generated um, the kind of resistance uh, from students uh, which we can only regard as uh, containing some real seeds of hope. If these less important disciplines are to survive at all, it would seem, compromises must be made. It would seem, therefore, as if now is the time to forge new alliances, gain new interlocutors, and hence new projects in ways that cut across the divides that seemed only a few years ago to be unbridgeable between, in particular, those uh, who insist on a grounding in the philosophical and cultural tradition of the West, as well as those who seek a kind of radical break with that tradition, or what Althusser called an epistemological rupture or break with such traditions, based on a not un well, unfounded um, suspicion of their complicity with race, nation, and empire. Indeed, a good example, a good recent example of this kind of thinking, which draws on both the humanistic tradition uh, and, dare I say, the canon, uh, on the one hand, and, a, and new uh, and, and interesting developments in cultural studies, on the other, can be found in uh, the book Commonwealth. In this text, Michael Hart and Antonio Negri draw upon, on the one hand, Aristotle, Spinoza, Hobbes, Locke, Machiavelli, and Marx, so the tradition of of uh, Western political thinking, <clears throat> and on the other, Deleuze and Guattari, Rancière, and of course, most prominently, Michel Foucault, to theorize contemporary capitalism and its alternatives. Now, before I go on to introduce Laura, I'd just like to say uh, a couple of things uh, more about the Institute's past and, and uh, uh, coming events in just a minute or two of Delphine. The Institute, for those who, who don't know, was founded in 1983 uh, from a very generous request uh, from Jennifer Simons and the Simons Foundation. Its, mis its mission is to create spaces for interdisciplinary research and teaching in the humanities for students and faculty, and also to demonstrate the importance within contemporary democratic society of the humanities. The Institute is relatively autonomous from the Department of Humanities, uh, which it uh, nonetheless overlaps in important ways. So far this year, we've had quite a full slate of events. Uh, the Australian activist Amanda Tattersall uh, spoke about coalition politics in September. And in October, we had a panel discussion of Harvey Graff's book written 30 years ago, The Literacy Myth. We've inaugurated not uh, one, but two series. The first entitled Counterculture with a talk by Johan Hartla from the University of Amsterdam on the idea of pre association in Marx and Freud, as well as a workshop on social and political thought with a paper by Professor Doug Nogash from the University of Ottawa on idealism, romanticism, and modernity. Later this month, we'll be hosting the second installment of the Counterculture series with a screening of Ileana Pietro Bruno's film Girlfriend Experience with the filmmaker present uh, to discuss uh, the film on November 26th. And in early December, we have uh, Professor Sherry Sun from Concordia coming to speak on translation as a model for citizenship in the city. In February, Professor Frank Cunningham will be here to lecture on cities, a philosophical inquiry, as well as conduct the second of our uh, workshops on social and political thought with a paper on urban Aboriginal sovereignty. These are just among some of the events that we'll be, be planning in the coming months, and we hope that you'll avail yourselves of them. Uh, so for more information about these and other events, uh, visit our website, which is uh, uh, www.sfu.ca uh, slash humanities dash institute. Um, and you can also visit our Facebook page for, for uh, more up-to-date information. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the support of the um, School for Contemporary Arts and co-sponsoring uh, the, the event tonight. Uh, as always, I'd like to say that uh, in this, uh, I'd like to say that this and, and uh, all of our other programming um, would not 
been possible without the generous support of Dr. Simonson and Simons Foundation. As governments and university administrations make fewer and fewer resources available to the liberal arts in general, institutions like the Simons Foundation uh, play an invaluable role in keeping the humanities very much alive and in the public eye. Last but not least, for all uh, the hard work she puts in getting uh, events uh, such as this off the ground, um, I'd like to acknowledge and, and thank Trish Grant for all your hard work. Um, yeah, and one last note, we're filming the event uh, and it will be uh, posted on YouTube, so if during the question period uh, you'd rather not be filmed, um, please let us know and we'll, we'll make that. Uh, so, um, so it now gives me tremendous uh, pleasure to uh, introduce to you uh, uh, Laurie Marks, who in this context especially needs really no introduction, um, but um, I'll provide you one nonetheless. Um, so Laura is a scholar, theorist, and curator of independent and experimental media arts. Her current research interests are the media arts of the Arab and Muslim world, intercultural perspectives on new media art, and philosophical approaches to materiality and information and culture. She is the author of The Skin of Film, Intercultural Cinema, Embodiment and the Senses, and at Duke University Press in 2000. Touch, Centrist Theory and Multisensory Media, and that's Minnesota University Press, 2002. Enfoldment and Infinity, and, it's, and Islamic Genealogy of New Media and Art, that's MIT Press uh, of this year. And many essays. She has curated programs of experimental media for festivals and art spaces worldwide. Dr. Marks is Dina Watts, University Professor of Art and Cultural Studies at Sun University. Please join me 